My mother is a woman of many talents. She's a pretty solid runner with a few marathons under her belt. She's fantastic at organizing the house, which is way cleaner than my apartment could ever dream of being. And she even speaks Dutch. It's impressive, I know. Good evening, Toastmaster members and guests. My name is Kira Murphy, and I know that it's customary for us at Toastmasters to usually share a speech about our own personal experiences. But this evening, with her permission, I'd like to share a story about my mother. We begin over 50 years ago in the beautiful little town of Nina, Ireland. As a schoolgirl, my mother began taking piano lessons. Every week, she would go down the road to her piano teacher's house and practice scales and arpeggios learn about treble and bass clef, and work on the simple pieces that her strict piano teacher, Miss Lee, had set her. This became part of her weekly routine and formed into a habit that she continued with until it was time for her schoolwork to take precedence. At age 16, she lay the piano to rest, and that was that. She moved on with her life, got new hobbies, went on to get a PhD, and became a mother to my brother and I. No more piano. In fact, it wasn't until over 30 years later that the piano came back into her life, but this time, not for my mother, but for my brother. When we were at school together, my brother started taking piano lessons, and so my parents bought him an electric keyboard for him to practice on. However, Piano was never going to be as exciting for my brother as Lego and bikes, and so his time on the piano was ephemeral, and he swiftly gave it up. As for the electric keyboard, it sat in the guest room of my parents' house, collecting dust and becoming little more than an extra shelf for my family to store picture frames on. But there was always something about the piano that called to my mother. And at age 59, over 40 years since she'd given up the piano, she decided it was finally time to give it another try. She found an ad in the paper for a local piano teacher and began taking lessons again. Again, this became part of her routine. And now she's been doing it for a few years, but the crazy thing is that I've never heard her play. In spite of the fact that she practices every week, my mum still doesn't think she's any good at the piano. I find this completely crazy. It boggles my mind because I know for a fact that my mother is better at the piano than 99% of the population. You see, According to the internet, less than 1% of the entire population can play so much as twinkle, twinkle, little star on the piano. <laughs> and I know, I'm sure of it, that my mother could do that, and way more. That puts her in the top 1% of the entire world in terms of piano playing skill. And she still doesn't think she's any good. I can't play the piano. Can anyone here? Nice job. But <laughs> that means she's also better than me and you and you and you and everyone else who didn't put up their hand. The top 1% of people in the world in terms of piano playing. An impressive feat, right? I think the same can be said about public speaking. I've spoken to a lot of people at Toastmasters who said they joined because they don't think they're any good at public speaking. It's crazy. Simply by being here, you are already better than so many people in terms of your public speaking skills. You can't be good at public speaking if you don't speak publicly, and most people don't. According to my friend, the internet, there's around 280,000 members of Toastmasters worldwide, which give or take a few thousand who speak publicly outside of our wonderful organization, and you're still looking at less than 0.01% of the population. Guess what, guys? 
That means that everyone in this room is in the top 0.01% of the population in terms of public speaking skills. Another impressive feat. So why do we tell ourselves that we're not good at the things that we do when the simple fact that we try them means that we're a lot better than so many people out there? I might not be the best cook in the world, but I'm a hell of a lot better than somebody who's never even bothered trying to make a meal. My paintings might not sell for millions of dollars yet, but they're a lot better than the paintings never made by people too scared to try. My mum might not think that her piano playing skills are up there with Elton John's, but she's still in the same 1% of people in the world in terms of her piano playing skills as he is. Indeed, she might even be better than Elton John. I mean, I've never heard him play. <laughs> it's difficult to think about our talents in a positive way, I know. But if we don't, who will? Put yourself on a pedestal. Remind yourself that simply by doing these talents, you are already better than all of these people who don't. And every time that you practice them, you're working your way up ever so slightly, getting better each and every time. I will leave the stage tonight proud to call myself in the top 0.01% of public speakers in the entire world. And I hope that every time you think, oh, I'm not really that good at that activity that you tried, that you remind yourself that actually you are. And the same goes for you, Mum. I think you should put yourself on that pedestal and I really can't wait to hear you play.